VAT control accounts. So, key points in this chapter. Uh, the VAT control account contains the movements in the amounts due to and from the HMRC for VAT taxation. The amounts are posted to the control account from each of the day books, including the journal, where appropriate. Uh, so there's a strong knowledge of T accounts and day books required for this question. So if you're not liking that, then uh, revisit the introduction to bookkeeping unit if required. Uh, you've got all the day books all set out, out in there right? and you need to understand where the VAT sort of comes in, in there. So in the introduction to bookkeeping unit, I sort of set out uh, double entry bookkeeping as, as you know, positive money and negative money, debits and credits. And the accounting equation is, as assets equals liabilities plus, plus uh, capital. So it's got a nice T account with the debits on the left, credits on the right. Really, and then the day books, uh, you know, go, go through that and, and clearly show where the, the debits and the credits are from the day books. So it's important, important book really, that an important unit. You can pass the introduction to bookkeeping unit, not necessarily knowing that. You know, you can process a few, a few transactions, uh, you know, or fill in a few sort of invoices or whatever. Dead click out the um, the opening trial balance question in there and scrape a pass. Uh, but what will happen is then you come into this unit and you struggle with with the T account questions really. So the VAT control account and the wages control account are you know, together with the you know, trade receivables and trade purchases, uh, trade payables control accounts are T account questions. So those are the key points. Um, VAT is a tax upon sales which is payable by customers on the net amount sold. It's charged to the customer by the supplier who collects the tax. So the supplier collects the tax and pays it to Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. So HMRC is Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. Um, and well, actually, we'll probably become His Majesty's Customs and Excise now, won't it? Um, you will most often see the abbreviation HMRC, which is the UK's government's tax collection agency. VAT on purchases, uh, provided they're not the end customer of goods, so as long as you're not the end customer of, of the good, you know, so you're still a company or whatever, and you're charging VAT on sales, VAT on purchases, provided they're not the end customer for the goods, you know, the member of the general public, can be reclaimed by companies and set off against any amounts due on sales, or may even mean that the HMRC uh, is paying the company. So they might have paid out so much VAT and not made the sufficient sales yet uh, that HMRC might actually actually owe the company money. So you need to be careful that, that, um, that VAT is not always a credit. You know, uh, and that's why dead click doesn't necessarily work here because uh, what will happen is the examiner will flip back and forth and make VAT a creditor or a credit or a debit um, item and it depends on whether it's going to be future money out credit or future money in debit. So for a detailed um, understanding of VAT see the introduction to bookkeeping unit it's, it's sort of the actual calculations and, and, and how it works is, is set out in that, that, that unit. So in terms of our day books then, the day books are set out in the introduction to bookkeeping unit and it's going to include amounts for VAT2 posters at the debit or credit side of the VAT control account. The exam is going to refer to the various day books and they're going to expect an understanding of whether the transaction increases the liabilities to, uh, to the HMRC or reduces the liabilities to HMRC, even to the point of creating a debtor. So we've got these various day books here. So the sales one is, you know, VAT amounts due to HMRC on sales. That's going to be increase in liability. It's going to be credit. Sales return is going to be um, VAT that's no longer due to HMRC on sales because the items have been returned. Reduction in liability, debit. Discounts allowed. VAT is no longer due to HMRC on the sales because the amounts been paid for the items have been reduced. So it's a reduction in liability, debit. Purchases. Amount of VAT reclaimed from HMRC on purchase. So that's going to reduce the HMRC you know, liability. It's going to be debit. You know, reduction in the money out item, you know, positive money, debit. Patient returns, well, the VAT can no longer be reclaimed from HMRC because those items were returned. So that's going to be an increase in liability. So uh, you know, an increase in the money out item, negative money, credit. Then we've got discounts received. So discounts received, uh, VAT can no longer be reclaimed from HMRC. Uh, on that. That's that discount received, which is a discount received on purchases. So VAT can no longer be reclaimed from HMRC because that amount has been reduced. Increases our liabilities, credit. Debit side of the cash book. So this is you know, debit cash, or well, debit bank really, isn't it? Uh, credit sales, uh, but also amounts due to HMRC, credit credit VAT. Increase in our liabilities, credit. The credit side of the cash book, so credit bank, is going to be debit purchases, but also debit VAT. Reduces the liability to, to HMRC, and it's a debit. Debit side of the petty cash book. VAT's amount due to HMRC on cash sales to the petty cash book. So we're going to go uh, debit, uh, petty cash, and we're going to go credit sales, credit VAT. Increasing the VAT liability, credit. 
credit side of the petty cash book, well, it's going to be VAT due from HMRC on cash purchases. So that's going to be credit, uh, your petty cash, and debit expense, debit VAT, reducing the, reduction of the liability, and reduction of the money out, money out item, positive money, debit. Anything in the journal, this is going to be irrecoverable debts is one of them in there. So it reduces the amounts due, to, due from customers uh, and the amounts therefore to be paid to HMRC. So that's going to reduce the liability and that's going to be a debit. The journal in the correction of errors could be either debits and credits and you're just going to have to see how the, uh, you know, what, what the error was really in terms of how it would work. So those are, those are our day books in here. So we've got all of that and all of that. And this is how they're going to line up in the T accounts here. So our sales returns, discounts allowed, purchase day book, credit side of the cash book, credit side of the petty cash book, and the journal for irrecoverable debts sitting on the debit side. So these are all reducing the liabilities to HMRC and could even push the liability to being an asset, you know, money owed by HMRC. And these ones, you know, are sitting on the credit side, sales day book, purchase returns day book, discounts received, debit side of the cash book, debit side of the petty cash book. They're going to all increase the liabilities to uh, to HMRC and the journal for correction errors could be sitting on either side so that's our T account here um, and pretty much that's going to be it you're just going to sort of be given a whole series of, of uh, you know VAT amounts in in the various day books so it'll be a nice sort of list of day books VAT amounts in there though and create a VAT control account yeah. slot the numbers in what's the balance on the VAT control account you would be given the brought forward balance as well and then what's the carry forward figure what's the what's the brought forward figure at the, at the, for the following month and so that that will be pretty much that really um pretty much of a short chapter this one really in here just need a lot of practice really so this is the next chapter in the next chapter we're going to look at a control account that is designed to ensure the posted of wages expenses is, is accurate it's called the wages control account so unlike other control accounts where there's a balance a, a debit or credit balance in there on well, this wage control account we're actually going to try and get it down to zero and it's just going to be a, an accounting exercise to just see whether we got the numbers right I'm actually going to change it round. I'll just give you a better control, which makes it um, much easier to score 100% on that, that question, which is how you'd be using it, doing it in reality, and then we'll retrofit it back into what the examiner's after. Uh, but it's much easier, much faster way, and you, give, you get 100% uh, really easily if, if you, you do it in a, a sort of different way to the to how the other books set, this, set that question out. And so hopefully that was uh, useful. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.